Welcome in to Duval Daily, your daily dose of Jacksonville Jaguars news and analysis. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we are ranking the top five options with the first overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft for your Jacksonville Jaguars. You can follow myself at Jordan DeLugo on Twitter, Generation Jaguar, at Generation Jag. And if you enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube, at Gen Jag. We're really trying to grow the channel over there and uh, continue producing more daily content for you guys. As I said, we are ranking the Jaguars' top five options with the first overall pick. So, four of these options include a specific prospect. But the first option, the top option for the Jacksonville Jaguars, as many of you might have guessed, is trading back. As much as I think the roster is improved, and as much as I think guys from the 2021 roster who may have struggled or not played up to their level of play will play better under this new coaching staff. Um, I still think this team is more than one player away from competing for the playoffs. So if you can land two first rounders, I say do it all day. Gives you two throws at the dartboard, increases the odds, and potentially gives you two plus starters for cheap on cheap deals over the next four years. If you could trade back and land an edge and an offensive tackle or an edge and a wide receiver or even an offensive tackle and a wide receiver, you could be looking at a dramatically different team, even in 2022. I think there's some guys that are ready to come in and contribute at all three of those spots, edge, OT, and wide receiver ready to upgrade the Jaguars roster. Now, the question, does anyone want to trade up? It does not look good. It really doesn't. It's late in the game for a trade of that magnitude for a team to move up to land their guy. It just does not seem like it's going to happen. We are now nine days out from the 2022 NFL draft. Generally speaking, uh, and historically speaking, Deals for teams to move up significantly to land a quarterback or land whoever they want. They happen before, you know, before uh, the week before the draft. So could it still happen? Sure. Uh, Should the Jaguars be prepared to get an offer? Yes. Will it happen? I would put the odds at 80-20 against, maybe even 90-10. It's just unlikely at this point. But the Jaguars should be prepared for it. And it is the top option. If the Jaguars can trade back uh, and land, like I said, I mean, you could be talking about getting Evan Neal a few picks later than the top spot or um, one of the top edge rushers, whether it be whoever falls. I mean, I don't think Aiden Hutchinson or Trayvon Walker is going to fall. But you could be looking at Kayvon Thibodeau in the five range, Jermaine Johnson in the five to ten range, um, Charles Cross, Ike Aquanu, who I know the Jaguars really like. I mean, Drake London, Garrett Wilson. Jamison Williams is a little bit of a tough one for me personally with the Jaguars need to help Trevor Lawrence immediately and Jamison Williams coming off that, um, that ACL. Who knows when he will be ready to go 100%. But yeah, if you can trade back, you've got so many good options. And the other thing about trading back, while I do think there are a few players that are above the rest of this crop, they're not significantly, there's not like massive tier gaps um, in the top half of the first round, really. Certainly within the top 10 prospects, there's not this like massive... Uh, gap between the tiers. So when you look at the fact that you could land your top ranked prospect, maybe in the five to 10 range, that just goes to show you that there's no consensus with this draft class and with no clear cut number one pick, um, at least in the eyes of the national media and a lot of draft pundits. It's the type of it's the type of 
class that you want to be able to trade down in, but it's also the type of class that is incredibly difficult to trade down in because there's no premier, premier quarterback. But again, be ready to trade back if you can. It's probably not going to happen. You're probably not going to get a deal where you get two first rounders. If you do, be ready for it. Pull the trigger. Go get your guys a little bit later on. But now it's time to look at the prospects that the Jaguars can pick with that first overall pick and rank those guys. The number two option and the number one prospect for me is Evan Neal. Offensive tackle, offensive lineman out of Alabama. Top player on my board. I think he's the best pass protector in the class, bottom line. I know a lot of people are big fans of Charles Cross, but uh, I think Evan Neal was asked to do more than Charles Cross. I think uh, when you combine his size, strength, flexibility, he's a six foot seven, 350 pound lineman, but he has incredible flexibility that allows him to play with leverage. He's athletic marvel. He has great footwork in his pass sets. He has great punch timing. He has those long arms you're looking for. He's a freak of nature. Wins at the point of attack in the run game. Now, if you want to nitpick, you can say his balance when he gets out to that second level. It's a work in progress, but he's been improving in that area, certainly throughout his collegiate career. And I think he has upward trajectory in terms of uh, playing with more balance and, and being able to strike uh, linebackers and, and DBs down the field. He can legitimately play four spots on the OL, and he has. I mean, started his career as a freshman as a left guard, right tackle as a sophomore, left tackle as a junior. Now he's coming out into the NFL, and, and he's ready to play any of those spots for you. Um, obviously, you have to factor in what is going on with Cam Robinson here. Because if you sign Cam Robinson to a long-term deal, and you have Walker Little waiting in the wings to play either, you know, right tackle. Probably right tackle is what it's looking like. I don't think signing, uh, or I don't know where you fit in Evan Neal. Obviously, if you want to play him inside in year one, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But you don't want to draft a career offensive guard with the first overall pick. The positional value is just not there. So if you're going to sign Cam Robbins into a long-term deal, yeah, you probably don't want to draft Evan Neal. But should you want to draft Cam Robinson, or excuse me, should you want to sign Cam Robinson to a long-term deal? Probably not, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think he's worth it. I don't think he's worth investing in long-term. The Jaguars seem to think that he is. They've talked about wanting to sign him to a new contract. So I'm not going to sit here and say I think Evan Neal is likely. I don't even think that he is probably the Jaguars' top offensive lineman. When you look at Iki Aquanu, he has some traits that the Jaguars absolutely covet and love and that, that makes sense for, for the scheme the Jaguars are going to be running, but I would not take him above Evan Neal. I wouldn't take him above Charles Cross for that matter. But if I was the Jaguars, I would take Evan Neal at one if I could not trade back. I would play him probably at left guard. And that would give me Cam Robinson at left tackle in 2022, Evan Neal at left guard, Tyler Shatley or draft pick at center, Brandon Scherf at right guard, and hopefully Walker Little at right tackle. And I think you can feel really good about that offensive line, especially with the depth you have with Ben Barch, with Jawan Taylor in that situation, with um, Will Richardson, even who they brought back. So yeah, I, I would do my best to support Trevor Lawrence with this pick to build up that offensive line, uh, to give you more talent and depth up front. When you look at an offense that, that can really dominate and take things to the next level, if you can protect Trevor Lawrence, he is going to dissect a defense. There's no question about it. And the Jaguars, in my mind, did not do a good enough job of doing that last year. They lost Andrew Norwell at left guard. They lost Brandon Linder at center. I think you need to continue to replenish that offensive line, and Evan Neal is the best guy to get the job done. 
He is my number two option behind trading back. Number three option. This is where it gets really interesting to me. Aiden Hutchinson is my number three option for the Jaguars with the number one overall pick. He's a strong edge shedder. He's going to keep the ball inside. He can also chase as a weak side defender. Uh, He's technically refined with his hands, has a ton of moves, and then counters to work off of those moves. He can threaten the edge with speed and explosiveness off the line. He has an underrated first step, in my opinion. And then he can work back across the face of the offensive lineman, implode the pocket. Uh, The more I've watched him, the comp I'm coming to is Jared Allen. I know a lot of you know who Jared Allen is, but for some of the younger viewers who might not remember him, uh, he had a Hall of Fame career, played at multiple spots, um, Kansas City, Minnesota. But this was a guy that just wreaked havoc in backfields consistently. A Hall of Fame level career. They're both tall. They're both technically refined with their hands. They have the power and incredible athleticism, startling athleticism for men of their size. Jared Allen was six foot six. Aiden Hutchinson six seven. Now both guys lacked length. They have uh, pretty much the same arm length, thirty two inches, which is below the threshold that a lot of uh, teams are looking for, especially with a guy that's that tall. But like I said. They know how to use those hands. Uh, is it going to pop up on tape? The, the length? Sure, it is. Some longer offensive linemen are going to get over on Aiden Hutchinson for sure. At times. Are they going to be able to consistently do it? I don't think so. I don't think anyone's going to be able to consistently handle Aiden Hutchinson. And don't, don't at me about that Georgia game. Georgia schemed away from him. They had the perfect plan to negate a star pass rusher. And because Michigan didn't have answers, Georgia just had free run um, to, to avoid Aiden Hutchinson at all costs. He has a nonstop motor. He is a tone setter, an emotional leader, one of the hardest working guys you'll find. He has that positivity and uh, energy that I think really will mesh with the culture Doug Peterson is trying to build in Jacksonville. With guys like Trevor Lawrence, Shaquille Griffin, Foley Fatukasi, and some others that are, uh, that are on the roster, there's plenty of super positive energy type of guys in Jacksonville. I think he just fits that to a T. And I think he'll become a defensive leader. I think you pair him with Josh Allen. And then you've got Arden Key and Dewan Smoot as your third and fourth rushers. That is a scary proposition. Um, and if you draft an Aiden Hutchinson at one, you don't have to worry about edge really the rest of the, the draft unless you just feel there's a great value, which there could be because this is a deep edge class. Um, Trent Balky acknowledged that. But I'd try to pair him with, if an offensive lineman falls that you feel good about out of uh, the the first round to 33, you pair him with Kenyon Green. Um, Or you could look at the receivers. If Jahan Dotson or Traylon Burks falls, if George Pickens is there at 33, I think that's a quality pick. Aiden Hutchinson. He is my third option behind Evan Neal and trading back. I think he's going to be the pick, honestly. I think you guys can start start getting excited about that. I really do think that's where the Jaguars are going to go with this pick. Trayvon Walker, you hear, you hear about him all the time. The Alden Smith comparison is insane to me. They're not similar. Um, I just don't. I don't personally see how a team could take Trayvon Walker with the first pick. I really don't. I think he will be a good starter. But where his pass rush is right now, for him to develop into an elite pass rusher or even above average pass rusher at the NFL level, it's going to take massive strides. 
I don't really see it. I'm sorry. I know that there's these athletes that really win in the NFL uh, at the edge rushing position that kind of came in raw. You look at Rayshon Gary, some other guys, but I don't know that there is a more raw pass rush prospect that you could you could find. And the pass rush prowess is just not there with any consistency. So yeah, I'm out on Tra- Trayvon Walker with the first pick. Now, my fourth option for the Jaguars is Kayvon Thibodeau, who in a vacuum, I have ranked higher than Aiden Hutchinson. He's an absolute freak show, has that explosiveness off the line, the length you need, uh, the ability to flatten at the top of the arc. He attacks the quarterback with violence. I mean, when he gets to the inside the pocket and gets to that quarterback, that quarterback feels it. He shows the ability to set the edge against the run on the strong side and uh, chase on the weak side. I think he actually shows up with his leverage and power and can align at multiple spots. I think you can shift him inside in certain situations, uh, which not a lot of people talk about. He can also drop better than just about anyone in this class. You've seen him make plays in shallow zones. I think he has a good chance to be the best defender in the entire class. I think he'd be a great pick. I would not knock the Jaguars at all for taking Kayvon Thibodeau. But it doesn't feel like the Jaguars have interest in him from everything I've heard from all the tea leaves, all the reports out there. Um, the reason I have for the Jaguars specifically, Aiden Hutchinson above Kayvon Thibodeau, is because I think he's just a perfect culture fit for the Jaguars, for what Doug Peterson wants, for, um, like I said, the positivity the unselfishness in that locker room that already exists. I think Aiden Hutchinson just fits it perfectly. And while I don't think either of these players will bust, I would say Thibodeau has slightly more of a chance to not reach his ceiling, if that makes sense. I th- I just think Aiden Hutchinson is pretty much can't miss at this point. I'm not worried about the length being a consistent issue at the next level. Like I said, I think he is a really good comp for Jared Allen. They both make amazing plays with their athleticism, with their power, with their um, hand usage. So, yeah, I just have Aiden Hutchinson slightly above Thibodeau for the Jaguars specifically. Um, If you're looking at a different team with a different culture, Kayvon Thibodeau might be the pick, but because Aiden Hutchinson has that positive attitude, has that energy, has that nonstop motor, he's the pick for me over Kayvon Thibodeau for the Jaguars, even though I have Thibodeau ranked higher. Just because a player is safe does not mean he's not a good prospect. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson is a safe bet. I think he's also got perennial Pro Bowl potential. I really do. Now, my fifth option for the Jaguars, the fourth prospect option. This one is going to come as a bit of a surprise, I think. It's a wild card. But after seeing him work out at his pro day, he looks good to go, looks healthy, looks like the player I thought he was. Drake London. USC wide receiver, um, he's 6'5", plays in between 215 and 220. The Jaguars don't have time to wait on an injured first-round pick. Uh, They just don't. The clock is ticking on Trevor Lawrence's rookie contract. You've got to make the most out of him this year. So you can't, um, unfortunately, in my opinion, take Jamison Williams in the first round if you're the Jaguars, at least not with your first pick. I think Jamison Williams would be my wide receiver one were he healthy, but he's dealing with that ACL that he suffered in January. It is going to be a while till he's ready to contribute. Um, but back to Drake London, like I said, 6'5", 215 to 220, silky smooth, super quick, 33-inch arms, uh, excellent leaping ability. He creates separation with body control, subtle arm movements. Awesome, awesome feet for a man his size. And now he's not as thick as Mike Evans, but that's who he reminds me of all day. Their ability to win outside, 
dominate from the slot, be three level threats. They're both good with the ball in their hands. They have that body control and catch radius in the air. I'm planting my flag for Drake London. If you pair him with Christian Kirk, both guys can move around the formation. You've seen both win outside. You've seen both win inside. I think you're giving defenses nightmares with their, they have, they both have the ability to be versatile for you in terms of their alignment. But Christian Kirk is that speed threat who, uh, can beat you vertically up the seam, whereas Drake London is more of that um, that rebound type of guy. He's got a long basketball history, played basketball at USC. You can see that in his movements, his ability to go up and just get the ball. I'd be on board with the Jaguars taking Drake London with the first pick. I would not bat an eye. I don't think they're going to do that. I still think it's Aiden Hutchinson, and I think there's a small chance that it's Trayvon Walker even though I wouldn't support that pick. But I would support the selection of Drake London with the first overall pick. Like I said, you've got to make the most out of Trevor Lawrence's second season in the NFL. You cannot go into year three with Trevor Lawrence still questioning, like, do we have the talent around him? Is he being supported with the proper infrastructure? You just can't do it. Drake London, I think, is going to be a superstar receiver in the NFL unbelievable ball skills. Like I said, he is quick. He will separate. Three-level threat. He can get it done with the ball in his hands. He's got stiff arms. He's got shimmies. Uh, he's not got amazing deep speed, but he doesn't need it with his with his, um, with his his physique and his skill set. So, yeah, Drake London is that fifth option for me right now for the Jaguars. So recapping that, top option, trade back, not likely. Second option, for me personally, is Evan Neal. Top player on my board, supports Trevor Lawrence, builds that infrastructure. You have the potential to have an elite offensive line. Uh, And if you give a guy like Trevor Lawrence that type of offensive line, he is going to pick defenses apart. Aiden Hutchinson, he is third on my board. on my option list here for the Jaguars. Think he is safe. I think he's going to be a pro bowler. I think um, I think he's going to be a, an incredible culture fit. And then Kayvon Thibodeau, um, you just don't know as much about his personality, as much about uh, how he's wired in between the ears as Aiden Hutchinson. Um, he's come out. He's said some silly things, just kind of like, dude, shh. But I think he'd be a great pick. Don't get me wrong. He is the third player I have for the Jaguars, the third prospect option here. Uh, I would not blame them one bit for selecting Kayvon Thibodeau, but I don't think it's happening. And then Drake London, another pick I doubt would happen, but I would be fully on board because of the versatility he provides with inside out um, ability. Because he's ball dominant, um, he creates separation. He's a freak show. I think he's going to play a lot like Mike Evans at the next level and and be a nightmare for opposing defenses, for cornerbacks. Uh, Find me a corner who can cover a guy like Drake London consistently. And the pairing of him with Christian Kirk, giving Trevor Lawrence a legitimate ball winner deep down the field, I think it's, it's a home run. That means Trayvon Walker, Jermaine Johnson, Ike Aquanu, all these types of guys, they do not make the cut for me. Uh, Jermaine Johnson would be next on my list, and behind him would probably be Charles Cross, to be completely honest with you. I just don't see Trayvon Walker as a guy who makes sense in the top 10. I think he's going to be a longtime starter. I think he's going to be elite edge defender, run defender uh, at the next level, but I just don't know if he's going to be a pass rusher. And that's fine. Like, if you're taking that in the teens, good for you. But uh, I just couldn't couldn't see him really even in the top five. And then Iki Aquanu, I kind of feel the same way. He has an upward trajectory in pass protection, but it's still pretty raw, pretty unrefined, um, pretty inconsistent. And so I just can't value him that highly either. Let me know what you guys think. 
in the comments on YouTube, on Twitter, wherever you're watching, listening, etc. Let me know what you guys think about these rankings again. Just to recap one more time, trading back is number one. Evan Neal is number two. Aiden Hutchinson is number three. Kayvon Thibodeau is number four. And Drake London, yes, USC wide receiver Drake London is number five on my list here. That's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in, Duval. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube and check genjag.com for all the latest Jaguars news, analysis, and gear. Uh, we've got a spring cleaning sale going on right now over on genjag.com 40% off everything with code clean 22 again that's genjag.com for all the latest jaguars news analysis and duval gear thanks for tuning in duval